What's up, guys? Welcome back to The Educated Barfly. Today, I have a special treat for you. But before we get into that, I would like to talk about trade coffee. That did not go the way I wanted to go. Father's Day is just around the corner, and I bet right now that I just reminded you guys, and now you're all thinking about what kind of gift you're gonna get. And I'm gonna say it. I'm just gonna come out and say it. I am a dad, and on Father's Day, I usually get uh, the greatest present. It's kind of an afterthought of a present, and uh, you know, kind of a, a hastily put together thing. Now, here's the deal. It's usually like a silly sweater, or it's a coffee cup featuring a non-funny joke about being over the hill. But what do you put inside that coffee cup? I'm going to solve this problem for you guys. Not only are you going to have something to put inside that coffee cup, but this is going to be a great gift that your dad is going to love. If you are a dad, you're going to want this, and you can just start subtly or not subtly leaving hints around the house that this is what you want. Trade is a coffee subscription service that matches you up with your favorite type of coffee. All you do is go to the website, fill out a short questionnaire, tell them what kind of beans you like, what kind of grind you like, what style of coffee maker you usually use, and they will pick out a selection of coffee that will come to you once a month. I use Trade myself and I love it because not only do I get coffee delivered to my house so I can be lazy and I don't have to go to the store and, you know, kind of play Russian roulette with what's going to be in stock or what isn't. I always get something that I love. They have never struck out. I have always gotten something that's awesome. And the other thing that I really love about it is that I can discover new coffees. Right now, Trade is offering my viewers uh, $30 off their first order plus free shipping. So just go to drinktrade.com backslash barfly or click the link in the description below. And don't forget that Father's Day is coming up. A trade subscription is the best gift you can get the coffee lovers in your life. Now that I've had my coffee break, let's uh, get on with making the cocktails. So a little while ago, I made a video about tiki drinks from Jeff Berry's Grog Log. These are recipes that he culled off of the many years of investigating old tiki recipes, and I did not like them at all. And many of you guys asked me about reconstructing them and what that would take. Even longer ago, I also did a like famous Mai Tais video where we did all the famous Mai Tais, and the very last one was the 1971 Mai Tai from the Royal Hawaiian, and it has kind of evolved over time to be called the Hawaiian Mai Tai. And this is a very problematic Mai Tai because it not only has a bunch of pineapple juice in it, but it has orange juice in it. It's a little bit too sweet. It's off balance. So hopefully this video will not only show you what you can do to kind of reconstruct a drink, but also give you guys a bunch of inspiration to reconstruct your own tiki drinks. And it's my hope that you guys will do this and share those creations with us. So the very first thing I think that we should do is actually make the old Mai Tai. Take a sip of it see what's wrong with it, talk to the flavor profiles a little bit, and then we will make the new one and uh, I guess see why it's better. So I'm gonna do quarter ounce of lemon juice, quarter ounce simple syrup, quarter ounce orgia. Ooh, that was a fat quarter, but that's okay. One ounce of orange juice and one ounce of pineapple juice. Again, we're elevating this with fresh pineapple juice, not dole. Half an ounce of lime juice, quarter of an ounce orange liqueur, one ounce light rum, one ounce dark Jamaican rum. One ounce of Demerara rum. Scotia Pebble. Give it a whip shake. Ungated pour into the glass. Finish it off with your pebble. Give it the old slappy poo. Give it a crushy pants. Twist off the ends like so. Voila. Get one. Oh, that's a nice cherry. Look at that. Boop. Right on top. Just like that. I mean, it doesn't taste bad. It's just not balanced at all. It tastes like fruit juice with booze in it. There's no balance between the sweet and the tart. It's all just kind of in there. I think it was a weird choice of rums as well. Like the rums don't really play that well together. I'm assuming that the light rum is just in there, sort of give it more body. It's a full three ounces of rum, which is kind of a lot. And then the Demerara rum, I mean, you can kind of taste it, but then you got this like little kind of bittering after effect. So you can taste the Demerara in there and the, the dark rum, but they just don't mesh well together. It's not creating a whole. So this seems like the sum of very disjointed parts. But there it is, the Royal Hawaiian Mai Tai. Now, let's invite our guest on and see what we can do to take the idea of this drink and then really elevate it to something. Mwah. Chef's kiss. Magnifique. C'est bon. So today, for you guys, I have asked Garrett Richard, Chief Cocktail Officer at the Sunken Harbor Club in Brooklyn, New York City, to come here and help us. Garrett Richard is a master not only at the tropical drinks category, but also someone who has worked at bars such as Existing Conditions. He had a pop-up at the Rain City Lawn Room called Exotica for a really long time, and he is a master at reconstructing old recipes into fantastic works of art. 
So, Garrett, please join us on the set. Bah, 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 bah. Yeah. It's Garrett Richard. I have to tell everybody, it is way roomier back here than what it looks like on camera. Oh, really? Like, yeah, this there's a lot like of space. Short, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thanks Ooh, for having me. You're so welcome. Yeah, I really appreciate yeah. being here. Thanks for yeah. coming and saying yes to this. Uh, I'm gonna get you a straw. Yeah, what do we have going here right now? Get you a bone straw. Um, this, so this is just the Royal Hawaiian Mai Tai from 1971. I used the Jeff Beach Bum specs for it. And it's just a whole bunch. I mean, do you want me to go through all? No, no, I think we all know this is basically a resort juice in a glass, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, it's what you said earlier, like, a lot of juice, a lot of alcohol, right? It's a hot, it's a hot drink, it is, yeah. even though there's a lot of mixer. And I think the thing is there are really good ideas in here. Mm -hmm. I think pineapple, orgeat, rum, those things all go together. So the question is, is like, how can we get to the heart of the matter? Anytime I'm working with my bartenders at Sunken Harbor Club, I really try to tell them when they're r and a drink, like get to the main idea. There's a main idea in here. And I think we can do that by embracing some new techniques one of which is acid adjusting. So you've seen this term acid adjusting, I'm sure in some fancy cocktail bar, maybe in an article. And I think it can kind of scare people off the bat. Like what is, are we adding acid to our cocktail? Like what, is, what does that even mean? Really what we're trying to do with acid adjusting is make a juice into something that we already know and love. And for all the cocktails you've made on your channel, we know that lemon and lime work really well in drinks, right? Right. The question is, why is that? And you know, you can say off the bat, well, lemon's really tart, lime is really tart. But if you look at the structure of lemon and lime juice, they're both 6% acidic. They're just break, broken down in different ways. So lemon juice is just 6% citric acid. Citric acid, you know, you put that on your tongue, it's a very clean acidity, kind of hits your tongue and then it leaves really quickly. Lime juice is a mixture of both citric acid and malic acid. Malic comes from uh, Granny Smith apples. If, if like when that's your first experience with it as a kid, is like you, you bite a Granny Smith apple, ooh, really tart. Hits your tongue for a very long time, it lingers. That's why when you have a daiquiri, that acidity is so, so like crushingly refreshing, right? right. Is that malic acid. So if we know that those two juices are 6%, what we can do is take another juice and just bring it up to that 6%, and then it'll act like a lemon or a lime. With the pineapple juice, we're gonna make this like lime juice. So all we need to know is how acidic the pineapple is, which pineapple generally, these are, we're speaking in generalized terms because of agribusiness and you know the type of produce that we get here in the United States. But generally speaking, this is about 0.8% acidic, and it's mostly citric acid. So what we're gonna do is simple math. We're gonna do six minus 0 0.8. And in this case, we're gonna adjust it to lime, which has that fun ratio of citric and malic acid. In this case, we're gonna break down the pineapple juice so that it becomes lime juice by adding 3.2 grams of citric acid and two grams of malic acid per 100 ml. So let me ask you a question. This is gonna get really nerdy, but yeah. I have to know. So in, in your ratio. 0 0.8. So yeah. 0 0.8, you're taking the 0 0.8 out of the lime juice. Is that because pineapples have more citric acid? Because I, I realize that when you do acid adjustment and you want to create that 6%, it's usually 4% citric acid, 2% malic acid, yeah, right? So and that's just... how you get your 6%. So what you're doing is you're taking the you're taking that 0, 0 0.8 out of the citric acid yep. and leaving the malic acid intact. It's simple subtraction, that's it. I wasn't really good at math, but I can do that. So. I mean, I'm terrible. At <laughs> terrible. Terrible at math. Yeah. Yeah, don't don't let the don't let the subtraction scare you. But yeah, if we just measure out 100 mils of pineapple and then weigh our acids out, we're going to have a pineapple pineapple that's super tart, and then we can build a Mai Tai on that pineapple juice. Cool. In order to acid adjust at this small of a level, you kind of need a drug scale. So it's gonna be 3.2 grams of citric. That's hard to do on a normal scale. It's actually easier if you have a liter of pineapple juice because it's just 32 grams, right? right. So if you're doing a party, you wanna make a lot of these, or if you just wanna make these throughout the week, make more of acid adjusted pineapple and you'll actually have an easier time. But since we're doing a little amount, we're gonna use this really small, fancy drug scale. The other thing is with these juices, you can start plugging them into drinks that you already know. So think about Pisco Sour with acid adjusted pineapple that's tart like a lime, or if you wanna make a Ricky with that, it'd be incredible. So let's start with our little drug scale. 
And then we're gonna do the same of the very, very tart malic acid. Oh my God. It's Almost, like, oh, oh, it's so, so close. close, like on the dot, it's <laughs> yeah, 2.1. 2.1, you're yeah. gonna take three grains off of that and it's gonna be two. In 20 years, I'll be able to do it like right. So we're gonna put 100 mils of our juice. And uh, fun fact, both pineapple and orange juice have the same acidity. So if you wanted to do this with orange juice, you could also use the same ratio. Pineapple just has a lot more sweetness than orange juice if you measure it out. All right, so that's two ounces and then right there. Yeah. So you wanna be able to dissolve your citric acid like pretty thoroughly. So if you wanted to take like a bar spoon and just, what we're gonna do is basically build a Mai Tai the way we would at Sunken Harbor Club. But instead of using lime juice, we're gonna use our acid adjusted pineapple juice. Right. And I chose the rums very specifically to go with the more pineapple-y, fruitier flavor. The Chairman's Reserve has a lot of uh, beautiful like barrel tannins, but it equally has a lot of nice like ripe orange notes that I think really play well with the pineapple. So a lot of my recipes start with salt. Uh, I'm sure people are asking, okay, why do you salt everything? Well, a lot of it comes from my background in training with Dave Arnold at Existing Conditions. And the central idea is you salt your food, why don't you salt your cocktails? And I think salt really interacts in cocktails in different ways. So you have a cucumber drink, it's gonna pop the cucumber. In the case of this reconstructed Hawaiian Mai Tai, it's gonna pop the almond. I mean, nuts like salt, right? So right. we're gonna start with five drops of saline. So the saline is 20% saline, just so you know. And if you don't know how to make it, you can Google it. Yeah. The idea with the percentage is that this is enough concentration that's not gonna throw off the balance of water and sugar and acid in the cocktail. Right. I like to do three for like smaller drinks, like martinis, things like that. Bigger tropical style cocktails, it needs like a big early. So do you put drops. saline in everything? Almost everything. Old fashions don't really need them that much. That's the kind of, it's sunken, we don't really use it in the old fashioned, but you know, there could be an old fashioned that it works for. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we start with our salts. Let's do one ounce of our acid adjusted pineapple. So this is adjusted to this acidity of lime juice, which usually takes a little bit of it, uh, of it on its own. Don't mind if I do. Yeah. And I'm gonna do what everyone doesn't like that yeah. I do and drink out of a jigger. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. Isn't that weird? Yeah, I mean, what's yeah. great about it though, and what I really like about it is that, you know, a lot of times recipes are off because uh, they're, they're, they're not tart enough and they just don't have that back palate oh, yeah. pop that you get in really well-balanced cocktails. And this is really nice because it tastes exactly like pineapple juice, but then that back palate pop, it, it kind of happens a little late. Like it's not right on the yeah, front of it. You it, get it, surprised it like opens. by it every time. Right, it yeah. opens up on your palate and then it hits you really hard on the back of your palate. So I, I, I can already tell that this is gonna work really, really well in a cocktail. Oh, it's nice, we're concentrating the pineapple flavor down. Uh, all right, so we have, our, we have our juice. Let's do our sweeteners. So Orja, let's we'll start with Orja. We'll Orja. We're gonna do five eighths of an ounce. So just basically a scant three quarters of an ounce. Um, again, if your orgeat is less sweet and less concentrated, you probably can knock that up to three quarters. So then we're gonna do we're one. We're gonna do one teaspoon of both Clement Creole Shrub and Grand Marnier. So behind the bar at Sunken Harbor, our sort of house curacao is a 50-50 blend of those two orange liqueurs. The idea is that you're getting high tones from the Clement, you're getting the sort of very bright rum agricole notes, and then you're getting sort of the base from the Grand Marnier. So we're trying to hit like all the, all the notes of orange. So into the cocktail you go. We're gonna do one teaspoon of Grand Marnier. And if you happen to have both of these batched, like we do behind the bar at Sunken Harbor, it's three eighths of an ounce of our Curacao mix, but that, that ends up being a teaspoon of each. And then our rums. So uh, I love using Karuba in Mai Tais. Basically, I think Karuba is like the best supporting actor in a lot of really good tiki drink specs or tropical drink specs. Uh, so we're gonna use three quarters of an ounce of Karuba. The thing is that rums sort of over the late half of the 20th century, they became a lot more rectified, they became lighter. You had the you know craze of Bacardi and the vodka renaissance that happened. And a lot of rums just became light rums or lighter right. than they used to be. And what's really nice about Karuba is you can kind of bring some of the body back to those rums that maybe don't have them anymore, or just the cocktails don't have them anymore. Right. And then we're gonna do an ounce and a half of the Chairman's Reserve. And we're using Chairman's Reserve. I think it goes really well with the pineapple. Um, the Chairman's Reserve distillery 
is kind of very similar to the way the Japanese whiskey distillers were. They, when they opened it, they looked at a lot of different Caribbean islands and they wanted to see what worked and what didn't. And they took kind of the greatest hits of all of those. And I think right. for this cocktail, it's great because it kind of blends a lot of those styles that were in that Royal Hawaiian. Like you get a little bit of that Demerara burn, you get a little bit of that funky Jamaican. And I think in one bottle, it does a lot of work. Right. Now let's get to the thing that I did wrong the last time I made a Garrett Richard cocktail, which was the shaking with uh, cold draft cubes and pebble ice. Take us through the, the thought process behind this. Yeah, so I know I know when you made my cocktail on the channel before you did a whip shake. I do a whip shake. Yeah, whip shake. It's it's a it's very common in cocktail bars and it works for a lot of specs. But at Sunken Harbor, we call this a hybrid shake. Really what it is, is it's just half of cubed ice and half of crushed ice. And the idea is that the cubed ice you shake with, it gives you really nice aeration, really nice texture, and it kind of whips the pineapple and then you dirty dump that into the glass and the cube stays at the bottom and kind of gives you less dilution up front. Right. And the idea is that less dilution up front actually pops the acid. If we okay. did a lot of dilution up front, it would right. be a very kind of flat acid thing. So the idea is to sort of give you that margarita like tartness in the Mai Tai. Oh, I love it. Yeah, you know, I never really thought about it that way. Cause honestly, you know, normally when I do a whip shake, I just do a Scotia pebble. And that's like just adding a little bit of upfront dilution and right. then adding enough chill to like chill it enough that when it sits on the crushed ice, it's not going to uh, immediately dilute. It's not going to be over diluted and it's going to be able to sit for 15 minutes, you know, while you drink your cocktail. Uh, this I have never tried, but it's so sensible. I don't know why this isn't a technique I've ever learned. Yeah, it's like those big cubes at the bottom are kind of right. holding a lot of the chill and you're getting a little bit more chill up front in the glass. And this allows the crushed ice to sort of have a slow burn effect, which this shake works really well with Trader Vic cocktails. We do it with the Kuiperina. So it's definitely something to play around with. Great, okay, so what we're gonna do, how many cold draft cubes? Uh, let's do four. Okay, four cold draft cubes. If your cubes are smaller, definitely okay. maybe throw one more in. But these are nice, these uh, are nice, nice size. actual yeah, cold draft. Yeah, these are actual cold draft. I'm gonna grab this and then we're gonna do... Oh, eh? we're gonna How do much? a little dirty oh, gonna, dump first. Oh, we're, gonna, we're, gonna oh we're gonna shake it and then dirty dump but it. I'm gonna stop you before we start shaking. So here's another thing I noticed in the previous video okay. is I don't put a lime wedge on the top of my Mai Tais. Right. We put a lime wedge on the bottom. The bottom. And what that does is it actually coats the entire cool. glass with lime oils. So. By the time we top with the crushed ice, everything has been coated in lime oil and it just doubles down on the lime flavor. So we need to cut a lime wedge. I think you topped because the old Trader Vic style is you put a lime wedge on the top. It right. looks like an island. It's a very nice presentation. And what we do is we call a spent wedge. So I'm going to take the wedge and then just squeeze out all the juice. So now you just have right. basically the oils. And that's going to go at the bottom of the glass. And oh, then, right on. I'm going to shake it with it. Yeah, and then, and then we do a little like like we're at a fancy party drinking wine and just swirl it. Right. You can, you can smell, see? Oh, yeah. It's that right glass in there. Is yeah. already, like, I'm all about getting light. those oils inside that. Like, yeah. That's why I actually like that, that the squeezer that we use because it's oh, a that chamber. Oh, squeezer is it's incredible. A, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a chamber, right? <laughs> so it traps all those oils and it puts it inside the juice and then you pour it and then you have this nice vibrant lime juice. Okay, cool. So Great. we're going to do this and we're going to do our awkward angry man shake. <laughs> So, it's so angry. <laughs> the bartender hates me. <laughs> and then we're just gonna we're ungated just gonna, pour. Just gonna ungated, yeah. Pour right it there. all up in there like that. Okay, and yeah. then we're gonna top with crushed ice. So it's gonna be about a cup to a cup and a half. Here, if you have a glass that's about 16 ounces, like a double old fashioned glass, you don't even need to measure it because it's going to be. A so let me amount. let me ask you a question. All right, I'm going to yeah. put this to bed for everyone once and for all. I and, and I, I think you probably know what camp I'm in, but are you in the snow cone on top or non snow cone? Oh yeah, uh, no, that's a great camp question to ask. When it comes to uh, no, snow, ice. no snow cone. All right, so you're but, in the no like, snow cone camp. Okay. The first week that I trained uh, the bar team at Sunken Harbor Club, I made a snow cone and I went. And then just put it and just knocked it off. And I said, right. we are not doing any of that here. <laughs> because of the added dilution. Yeah. Um, I think tiki tropical drinks should have like a measured amount of crushed ice. Right. Because then you know what you're getting across the board. And for, for this recipe, it's about a cup to a cup and a half, depending on your thing. But this is perfect to me. Maybe, All right. Yeah. I hate to say it, guys, but you may have been right. I don't know. 
I don't, know how I, I don't know how I fall on it because I, I you, love me a snow cone and I know that it adds extra dilution because you got, you know, the top, you know, the top of the cocktail is, uh, you know, all ice and it's rapidly diluting. I just think that a lot of drinks need that extra dilution. Um, and then also, of course, you know, any ice that's below here is uh, keeping the uh, consistency of the cocktail and and actually helping it to not over dilute over, uh, you know, a measured amount of time or whatever. Yeah, I think it depends on the drink because uh, a mint julep, you definitely want a lot of that ice. I would say maybe even a zombie, like something that has a lot of alcohol. Right. But like, this is fairly delicate. It is, yeah. yeah, I would agree with that. All right, so we got our mint sprig. What else are we doing? Give it the old wacky and the I think we need crushy. to let people know, cause like this looks like a normal Mai Tai. We should probably let people know that there's something going on here. Okay. Educated bar flyer, no, I'm not really that happy with the pineapple wedges that I cut. I'm never happy with the way they look in my drinks. That's fair. I want to see a guy that does this day yeah, to day. I, I do do it know? daily. Um, I tend to just cut from the top and then just do some like thick wheels and then cut the wheels from there. This is a really good knife. So I think we'll get, we'll get a nice, and cut that wheel in half. And then, you know, we're being fancy. If I was at the bar, maybe I'd make it a little bit smaller, but you know, do something like that, right? Well, there you go. Yeah. Oh yeah, I actually yeah. like where you notched it. Yeah. Let's taste this. It's just so freaking nuanced in flavor. And I gotta say that that spent, nice. yeah. I'm never gonna do a Mai Tai without a spent lime wedge. In the, it, in the glass. It helps in That's so many drinks. So, but what I love about it is that even well-constructed drinks and even well-constructed Mai Tais specifically, um, but this is kind of true for a lot of different tropical drinks, have, you know, this ratio between tart and sweet where the tart can dominate, you know? Oh yeah. And, and, and then obviously seasonally that changes, right? Uh, and, and that's not to say that the, that those drinks don't have their own balance, but this particularly has tart and sweet. There's like nuances in the tart mm -hmm. and there's nuances in the sweet and you taste a lot of different levels of sweet and what's that's, what that's doing against the acid adjusted pineapple um, that I've just don't experience in very many cocktails. I really is quite possibly the best my time. <laughs> Ever had. Well, I mean, making that simple change of like changing the category of what the pineapple is doing, like in this, in the original drink that we made, the pineapple is more like flavored dilution, right? And right. now it is the acid that everything is being built upon. So it really can speak for itself. It can carry the entire cocktail. And the idea is that sometimes in looking at these older drinks, not saying like, okay, this is bad. It's saying, well, okay, what, what is not work? Like what's not playing its role? And in that original Mai Tai, like everyone loves pineapple juice. Like right. the pineapple should be the star. And it was like being dominated by all these other things. And like, you taste this, it's like, it's like biting into the best pineapple you ever had. It is. Know? I mean, it's like, it's like, I'm back, I'm back at the, uh, you know, Disney resort having like Dole Whips and Mai Tais in one glass. But there's this kind of effect that this does, which I think some of the best cocktails do where you can taste all of the separate ingredients right. by themselves and then also together at the same time, which is a weird trick that happens to your brain. Like none of the rum is dominant. All of them play their part. You can taste all the different things that they're doing kind of separately and together, as, as well as all of the other ingredients. You know, we, we what's nice about this also is that even though we acid adjusted pineapple and we didn't have any lime in it, we still utilized lime by added, introducing the oils with that spent wedge. It's, I cannot. Yeah, li I mean, lime oils are so important to so many cocktails, right? right? Like, I just can't overstate how incredible, like in just incredibly crafted this drink is. And it really shows you like what drinks can be, you know? Yeah, like, so they much, don't have to be so just this, potential. they can be yeah. up here, you know? Yeah, I think for everyone out there, it's like, please try acid pineapple and you know, lots of different drinks. I think that it, there's potential for this in a whiskey sour, you know, maybe right. you adjust it to lemon and you have a nice like bourbon-y lemon pineapple thing, you know, there's, right. there's, there's a lot of avenues to go on. And I think tropical drinks going forward, I think you're gonna start seeing a lot more of these techniques being used. I mean, I'm gonna start playing with this technique for <laughs> sure. And not only that, but I just wanna say to you guys, I know that there's gonna be a portion of you that really you don't want to do this. Like you don't want to put forth the effort to do this, but I got to say, it's just a matter of adding citric acid and malic acid to, to pineapple. You can get those things on Amazon. You can get them at a specialty Very store. Easy to get. Right. If you guys that did the, the super juice episode that we did, then you guys have it lying around your house. Anyway, Absolutely. just juice a pineapple and there you go. Um, I got to say, 
Even though I do love the Trader Joe's hack, I'm not really sure that that pineapple juice would really it, do this trick justice. Know, yeah, but we can uh, we can test it. Yeah, we can point. absolutely test it. And yeah, I mean to build on what you're saying, I've done this technique outside on a park bench before. Right. So as long as you have a scale, it helps if you have the drug scale. But you know, if you have a regular just kitchen scale at home, this is very accessible. And, right. Uh, but I also want to clarify something because when we talk about these drinks as being sort of problematic, it's not to say that these drinks are bad. And the you know the proof of that that they're not bad and that but they, that they might be problematic is that these drinks are still around, right? So the flavor profiles that these drinks present are 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 actually very good. It's just a matter of taking those flavor profiles and dialing them into something that makes sense. Because I will say, now that I've tasted this and this side by side, you know, you have this, which is very vibrant, very nuanced. It's, it does what I like to say kind of pretentiously about cocktails, where like the best cocktails sort of reveal themselves like an onion, like layer upon layer as they dilute, the they Shrek evolve. Factor. Right, they, they yeah. evolve as you drink. And you're, you know, we kind of get that effect here. And then next to this, this guy tastes a bit flat. Yeah, I need, right? to, I need to go back to this one just to see. It, it, it tastes a little bit flat, even with the added dilution. But I will say that the nuances of this cocktail come out when it starts to dilute and you start yeah, to which that might when have, you start to deconcentrate all of those uh, juice flavors. It might have been designed for resorts. I mean, you're walking around, you're going to the pool. Like, right, right. That's some time, and you're outside in the sun. That's some time, you know. But you know, when you're inside a cocktail bar, you know, you may want something a little bit more concentrated, right. a little bit tartar. So there you got yeah. it. I don't want to tire you guys. You guys have a lot to think about right now. <laughs> so I think you should just, uh, you know, do what Garrett says, go out, ask it to just some pineapple juice, throw them in some cocktails, hit us up on Instagram, hit us up in the comments, tell us what you think. And I want to thank you so much, Garrett, for yep. coming. Uh, I hope this is the start of a very fruitful relationship. Same um, here. Like I said, I'm a very big fan of what you do. I Same, will be I, I'm in so front glad of you. to be here on your channel. This was such a treat. And um, I hope that when you're in Brooklyn, New York, you can come to Sunken Harbor Club. It'd be great to host you there. I, w I mean, it's yeah. on the list now. I mean, it's like a guaranteed stop 100%. So yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Cool. I don't know. You can, can I, can I plug my you Plug everything, yeah. <laughs> please. Um, so you can find me behind the bar at Sunken Harbor Club in Brooklyn, New York, and you can see some of my creations on Garrett J. Richard at Instagram.com.